So, Mali has dropped French as the official language. Yes. Congratulations. Standing ovation to Mali. Yeah, absolutely. We applaud you for that. First of all, I uh, greet you, everybody. Thank you very much for being part of this. I appreciate you so much. I see you from all over the world. South Africa, I see you. Kenya, I see you. Zambia, I see you. Malawi, I see you. Nigeria, I see you. Ghana, I see you. Everybody. Sudan, I see you. UK, I see you. United States of America. Caribbeans, thank you very much for being part of this. I appreciate you guys. Before we start, let's do this so that most of our people can get this message and make our voice bigger. If you are new here, it's your first time and you've not joined the crew, please do so. Subscribe. It's with great pleasure that we exchange and develop each other. Let's go at it. So Mali is a beautiful West African country. If you've never heard of it, please put a map of Mali. For some of our people who don't know where Mali is, put the map of Mali and Africa so they can locate where Mali is. Beautiful people, beautiful culture, but also very strong people at heart. So for many, many years, Mali has been fighting very hard to try to get its independence back. But now, I think the first step of being made, the first rocks are being placed in space where Mali is going to grow like never before. So now... For most of us who don't know, Mali was colonized by the French. They came in Africa, they took over many countries in Africa. Senegal, Côte d'Ivoire, Togo, Benin, and many other countries. Mali was part of those countries. And Mali, with the colonization, inherited the language of French people. That's what they do. You know, they come to your country, they beat the living crap out of you, then they leave you a language. They take all your names first, okay? They take your names away. Your name was perhaps uh, Lukunda. All of a sudden, your name is Jean-Pierre. Jean-Pierre Cartin. Yeah, you know, Africans name. Look, my name is Zach. Shouldn't be Zach. Yeah, it should be something else. But the reason why my name is still Zach right now, it's not a colonization. It's just because I have created a brand with the name Zach. I'm a professional boxer. I have boxed for many years. The world has known me through the name of Zach Moikasa. So changing my name now, uh, yeah, for that space is maybe not very productive. However, in the future, it will be done. In a different perspective. But many African nations, many African countries, many African people have lost the name. The names are John, Michael. Yes, it shouldn't be that way. Because I've not seen, like President Mobutu of the Zaire used to say, he has not seen anybody in Israel call their name Mutombo or Kalenga. There's no Israeli whose name is Kapanga. But how do you call yourself Meshach, Shaddai? Uh, you know, it doesn't make sense, right? So those are signs of colonization. As simple as that. Mali was put in a space where they lost names. They also lost the languages. Props to the countries of Africa where people have kept their traditional name. We salute you. You've done a tremendous job. South Africa is one of them. Most South Africans' names are very African. Yes. Congratulations to them. But that also props to perhaps the fact that the country was really liberated in 1994. So that's very recent. There is still the impact of apartheid and people hate it. They're very proud of being who they are. As opposed to many African countries where 1960 was when people were liberated. Therefore, they've had the longest time to sort of forget the oppression and adopt the Western languages, adopt the Western names. Anyway, so Mali has dropped French. French is official language in Africa, so official language in Côte d'Ivoire, in Cameroon, in many other countries, Senegal, Guinea, Gabon, and all that. Same as English being official language in Kenya, in Nigeria, in Namibia, and many other countries. But Malians have said, enough is enough. We don't want this anymore. We don't want French as an official language anymore. So what has happened between Mali and France in the recent years is a lot of misunderstanding. Basically, Malians wanting to claim back the country. After the death of Gaddafi, a lot of terrorists came down to Mali. Yes, they came from Libya down to Mali, creating mayhem all over the place. And after that, France propose say okay we can help you fight your terrorist in the country if you would allow us they came into the country but unfortunately those things didn't, didn't end they came to provide support apparently but it didn't end so at the end Malians were not happy they say you know what you guys are not doing anything you're just wasting resources for no good reason so maybe we can handle this ourselves how about we do this ourselves and see if, we, if yeah if this is going to continue or not that is when the government the current government of Mali came into space they came into work into office by a coup d'etat basically toppling the previous president because he was according to them cooperating with colonialists malien et malien face à la difficulté de garantir à ce jour le respect de la constitution l'intégrité du territoire l'indépendance de l'unité nationale de la paix et de la cohésion sociale monsieur ibrahim boakar keta et son régime après dissolution de l'assemblée nationale Ce jour, 18 août 2020, a rendu sa démission. 
after this government took power, they asked French military to leave the country because they were not doing anything. They were not doing their job. At least they were not doing their job. Terrorism was continuing. So they said, why are you here again? Please leave. They left. And since that, Mali and France have been in many altercations, many situations. Mali has accused France of funding terrorist groups to come and attack the country. Yes. C'est un peu, un peu insultant pour euh, la mémoire de nos 59 camarades qui sont tombés euh, en se battant pour le Mali et également pour la mémoire de tous les Maliens qui se sont battus à nos côtés mais aussi des, des personnels de la MINUSMA, des forces euh, africaines de la MINUSMA qui sont tombés en luttant contre le terrorisme. They even provided proof for that, evidence for that. They asked the United Nations to sit down so they could provide evidence. The United Nations refused to have a session where Mali could provide evidence of the French people providing weapons and drone intelligence to the terrorists. Props to Mali, now they have decided to cut out the French language from their official whatever. But however, they say French will remain as a working language. So not an official language, a working language. And I can understand that. Why? Because for many years, they've used French into documents. It's going to take some time to transpose those documents from French to a different language, whichever language you're going to choose. So they say Mali has about 70 other languages spoken in a country. This is crazy. More than 70 languages you choose French. That's how oppressed we are, all of us. I'm telling you. And unfortunately, you will see in this culture, especially the French culture in Africa, people are correcting each other on who speaks French the best. Yes. Yeah. If you speak a very, you know, French with a Paris accent, you are considered immediately as a very intelligent person. And that shows you the level of self-hate that this has birthed into the art of many Africans. So France withdrew its last troop from Mali in August ending its nine-year military operation in the country. Late last year, the military government of Mali ordered all NGOs, include aid group funded by France, to cease operation in the country. They ordered them to cease operation in the country. Why? Because France refused to fund Mali, but France was funding NGOs in Mali. So they said, no, if you don't fund us because you don't like us, why are you funding NGOs in our country? Somebody has an issue with you. A neighbor has an issue with you. Okay, he's not going to provide you any service or nothing. But in the meantime, he's giving intelligence or something to your child. Would you accept that? No, you would not accept that. And that's the reason why Malians say, you know what? We don't want no NGOs being funded by France here anymore. Now, I don't know. What do you think about this? This is very interesting. I think it's about time Africans really claim their origin and their nature. I think it's very necessary. We have languages in Africa. Why can't we use African languages? One of the reasons why, I mean, today you can listen to me is because of English. I can understand that. But we cannot perpetuate this. No. We need our own language. We need our own way of communication. We need our own language to reflect who we are. There is a language named Swahili. Swahili is the most spoken language in Africa. Over 200 million speakers all over the world. Coming from Kenya, Tanzania, Comoros, Mayotte, Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, eastern part of the DRC, Congo, some area of Somalia, some areas of Mozambique, Zambia, some point of Madagascar. It's a language that's widely spoken by Africans already. Yes, it has some influence of whatever but swahili is the language that's spoken if you are from the congo you cross to rwanda you can communicate in swahili they will listen to you and understand you easily if you are from rwanda go to uganda you cannot speak ugandan language you can speak swahili they'll understand you if you are from uganda you go to kenya it's the same thing kenyans speak swahili so do tanzanians you know what i mean so it makes it very easy it creates one big block of people that understand each other swahili has 200 million more than 200 million people that speaks the language I feel, same as many other people, that Swahili should become the language of Africa. Africans should come together. They should impose the Swahili language in every single country in Africa. Some countries in Africa, m many countries actually at this point, who are not naturally Swahili speakers, have evolved, have voted laws into constitution to get Swahili as an optional language for the country. But I personally feel like this needs to be emphasized and pressed very hard for Swahili language, like we forced English, like we are forced French as Africans. The same way we are not born speaking English or French, the same way we are not necessarily born speaking Swahili. We can learn the same way we learn French and English. We can learn the same way Swahili as a language, allowing us is to discuss, communicate, understand, tolerate, accept our brothers, Africans. Because today you see in Africa, in some areas, Africans are ready to accept English people coming from Britain or Americans because they speak English that they wish they could speak like. But they don't like other Africans because they don't even understand each other. Even though they are the closest brothers, they probably have very similar background and stories, but they have issues communicating with each other. And I think the first way to bond with somebody is communication. When you speak to somebody in, in the white man's language, he can understand you. Surely you speak to him in English or French, they understand you. 
When you speak to them in his mother's tongue, you touch his heart immediately. Let me know how you feel about these fellas. Is Swahili the language? Is this a good idea? How do you feel about Mali moving forward with dropping French as an official language? And let me remind you, the money that was used in Mali for many, many years, the CFA franc was printed in France. Yes. That's the level of slavery that people still live in in these years. But they've done some work about that. Let me know your take about this. How you feel about this? How do we come together? How do we manage this? Is Swahili the language we need to move forward to? Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Don't leave without leaving your comment. We want to read about you. We want to hear from you. God bless.